This is Twit. Jailbreak developer hacks NFC on the iPhone 6S to use it with NFC devices, which you can do with every other phone made except Apple iPhones. I don't think it's worth it uh, to do a jailbreak just for that, but I guess yeah. it's, it's a technological feat. I, 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 you'll, you'll, I love the determination and the it's, it's almost like a hobby jailbreaking phones these days, just like a hobby being old cars or old radios, because anything that you would want to do, anything you feel like, gee, I can't do this with an iPhone. I want to do this. The huge downside of jailbreaking a phone uh, is so <laughs> enormous compared to or I could spend all of one hundred and eighty nine dollars on an Android phone and do all the hacking I want on this device, <laughs> including including installing custom ROMs, including sideloading any app that I want, uh, including getting any piece of malware that I think would be fun to have on a phone. <laughs> it's like I I don't understand what the fun of jailbreaking an iPhone is, but that's the definition of a hobby. Yeah. Uh, I always wondered why Apple doesn't let you, you know, you know, on Android, NFC can do a, a myriad of things. Uh, Benjamin Mayo in 9 to 5 Mac said that one of the incentives was that since only Apple Pay uses NFC on an iPhone, Apple doesn't have to think about what, what, is, what am I seeing? As soon as it sees NFC, it just launches Apple Pay. Yeah. I guess that makes yeah, and sense. And they never, I mean, they, uh, like they had, they were trying to do NFC, not trying, they were meddling with NFC for years. Like I think there were iPhone 4 prototypes that had They NFC were very they late to come to the party. To release it. Like they were yeah. using it for a long time, but they never, like again, they don't do chipsets, they do feature sets. For them, they still don't have NFC. They have Apple Pay and NFC is just one of the components they have to have on board in order to use Apple Pay. But there was never like, we're going to add NFC as a feature to the iPhone. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's what Apple does. They don't that they recognize that to consumers, hey, and now this new phone has NFC is not a feature, but saying, and now our your phone can simply buy things by tapping it against the the credit card terminal. That's a feature, and that's the way that Apple thinks of things. So they certainly wouldn't expand NFC. They they they, they wouldn't want to compromise experience A unless they could figure out a much better experience they can do add by adding it. Uh, and as much as I, I, I conceptually I like the idea of uh, of of a uh, Connecting to a wireless speaker I've never seen before by simply tapping my phone against it. I have a couple speakers like that. I just don't use it that way. I spend right. all of four minutes setting up via Bluetooth. And then for the rest of the life of both of these devices, all I have to do is <laughs> walk into the room with this device if I was using it the last time or just simply tap it off the list. I think that's really the uh, – there are other, obviously many – use cases for NFC and Android phones. You know, you could tap, you could put in it. We used to do this. We had an NFC tag on the wall. When you came to the studio, you'd tap it and you'd check in at Foursquare. Uh, you can have NFC just like a QR code, go to a website. Mm -hmm. But I think the most common use is what you just described, where a device has an NFC chip in it, tapping. For instance, all of my cameras, my Nikon, my Canon, uh, my Olympus, all have a little NFC logo on it. And if you're using an Android phone, you could tap it to that, and it will. If you have the uh, the related app on your phone, it'll launch the app and connect. Yeah. Although you, do you can do that with. The, I do it on an iPhone yeah. with a QR code. I mean, it's not. But that. well, Apple TV yeah. has Bluetooth. But you just tap your iPhone to your Apple TV, and it sets it up. Right, right. Yeah. I but set up a Google also, Cast TV the other day by uh, the same thing, putting the remote yeah. control near the television. Right. There's, 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 we get back to the principle that I like of you. It's really great to let users find their own awesome in a feature or a product. The, the, the counterbalance of that, like, like the my my most uh, exciting use of NFC was I actually I actually put an M NFC tag sticker on my uh, uh, my my phone crate my my car cradle for the phone and had a little piece of uh, little uh, third party app so that whenever i put my android phone in the car cradle it would automatically switch over to okay he's in the car now so i'm going to switch over to the minimalized car interface i'm going to i'm going to automatically load up the the map info for this place he's he usually goes i'm automatically going to make ways the number one i'm automatically going to turn off notifications and it was like uh, it was like 30 seconds to 2 minutes of fiddling with settings done automatically while I'm turning on my seatbelt and trying to get my 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 82 ounce Dr Pepper into the cup holder of my of my car. And people do such clever implementations too. I don't think I can say who did it, but there's one where uh, there's a Bluetooth that will unlock a door, but because they want to make really sure that you're next to the door, it has to measure the deformity caused by the metal of the of the handle of the door before it will allow the Bluetooth to unlock it. That way it won't just unlock as you're walking 10 feet down this hallway. You actually have to be in front of it at the time. And I just think all these technologies, it's not so much which chip you use. Like I don't care as a user, I could care less if it's NFC or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi direct, like point-to-point -point 
uh, Wi-Fi um, setup. I just want it to work. And I think more and more they can use any radio they want to make that work. 